us for her presence. Ms. Habiba Kahinde, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks. Really nice to see you guys again. At- so without much ado, I want to welcome Camilla Nontra. Yay! <laughs> Oh my goodness, I should, I should come to you every day when I'm feeling, when I need. <laughs> <laughs> well, correct, this is Sudan. Wow. Sudan. Believe it or not, Sudan has more pyramids than Egypt. Interesting. Mm. Begin to think in a pan-African way because they, they now see that their conditions are not just about that local space, but the condition is linked to all of the other. Hello, hello, so hello. You guys finally see me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we see you. <laughs> Let me change it up. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pan Africana Show. Um, we thank you for joining us. Good morning to you. If you live on, I'm from uh, San Diego, California. If you live on the East Coast, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon if you live on the other side of the world, and good evening if you live in the uh, Oce- Oceania region. We start by thanking God, by Him we live and move and have our being. We're going to start with our dearest, most lovely Kechi first, my co-host. How are you doing, Kechi? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How's everybody doing? I know it's been a while. Yeah, it has been, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're surviving the cold and the rain while some people are in sunny California and <laughs> enjoying it's life. Actually not, it's actually not sunny yet, sunny today, so. Oh, it's not uh, sunny today? Yeah, <laughs> mostly, <laughs> mostly it, it, it gets sunny, yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's been a while since we've been with uh, our audience. Oh, we got, uh, it looks like I told you. Um, it's been a while since we've hey, um, brother. been with good, our audience and we just wanted good to. Good afternoon, bro. <laughs> uh, Take this opportunity one to welcome you all back, and uh, and number two to prepare you for what we're getting ready to embark on today. Now, all through the week, we've been hyping up this big competition, friendly competition, <laughs> right? All about learning and knowing Black history, and we're gonna put uh, my two co-hosts to the test today. So for today. Instead of being Jesse McCoy, I am going to be Jesse Trebek. You know, <laughs> we're big question it. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to the company that makes these cards. Uh, Urban Intellectuals has Black History trivia cards. They're great. So shout out to them. Uh-huh. Um, but I want to go first and just kind of allow our viewers who also will be participating, should they desire to do so, to know a little bit about our contestants. So if the contestants wouldn't mind introducing themselves to our crowd once again and tell us who are you playing for? Who do you represent? Is it your family, your country, your uh, city, your university? Just let us know a little bit about you. So let's start with uh, the lady of the house, uh, Miss Ketchy. Wait, hold on, hold on. Is there a prize? (laughs) Yes, there, there might be. we still owe you a prize from the old. One, I so. need to know these things so I can decide how hard I go. Yeah. <laughs> there, there so could be a prize. We owe you yeah, a prize. What you said? So we, that's the Christmas shopping list. Odds, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, odds. Oh, it's, yes, there will there will be a prize. Okay, okay, all right. So now that I'm rubbing my hand like <laughs> okay. the bird man. so. Good morning, guys. I know it's been a while since we've had a podcast. Some of us have been traveling and had different. Hey, Stephanie, I'm actually in Texas, too, right now. I'm oh, wow. Yeah, she meet up. Oh, she's in uh, Austin, I think. So um, I will be playing for myself, Nigeria, for all my fans. Um where do I even begin? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, playing, <laughs> I'm playing for fun, but yeah. I'm hoping I win. Fingers crossed. Fingers <laughs> crossed now that I've heard that there is a prize. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Wonderful answer. Now, Fred Nantra, tell us a little bit about who you are and who you're playing for today. Well, um, Fred, Fred Nantra, as you rightfully said, and co-host of the Pan Africana show. And uh, I'm playing for me uh, because uh, to even go as far as the Nontra family or the Maticoli, 
my families are too big. And if I let, let them down, I could be in big trouble. Or if I say I'm playing for Ghana. <laughs> so it's just me, because that one is just me. I can handle it. But I'm also quite competitive. So uh, let's see how it goes. Nice, nice. <laughs> we already have some tension in the air. And I know that we have a few people already Jesse, watching. Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse is just hyping this up too much. <laughs> I know, right, Fred? He's so, attention. just okay. just for background, we've got two sets of cards, and I do have the little plastic wrap that the cards were in, so you all know that it wasn't. It's not, you know, anything that I've seen before. We're this is all brand new. We're gonna learn together as a family. Okay. okay? So, who would like to start? Question number one. Fred can go first. Okay. <laughs> You've been volunteered. Sure. Right? That's fine. Okay. The first question is what happened on July 4th, 1881? And it's multiple choice. All right. Okay. So A, Marcus Garvey was born. B, Harriet Tubman escaped through the Underground Railroad. C, the Tuskegee Institute was founded. Or D, Nat Turner was killed. The question again, what happened on July 4th, 1881? Wow. Okay. And yes, the crowd can chime in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can the crowd chime in? Yes, the Hold crowd can chime in. All right. So I'll say um I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not sure about this answer. Um it's a little confusing. Dates, sometimes dates can be confusing, but I'll say um <laughs> yeah, I remember when slavery ended, and then that's 16 years after that. So mm -hmm. I'll say, oh, so yeah, it couldn't be Harriet Tubman. So that one has been crossed out. And then nice. it could possibly be. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not Marcus Gavi either. Okay, my, the, the crowd is helping. You see a lot me. of help from the crowd. <laughs> okay, I'll say, I'll say, um, not Turner. Your answer is D, Nat Turner was killed? Yes. That would be incorrect. The correct answer is C, the Tuskegee Institute. Oh, I should have said that. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so Institute. this card is off. Now let's go. Catchy. Here we go. Uh, well, this is a promotional card. For those who are interested in buying, here we go. Catchy, who was the first African-American person to receive a patent in the United States in 1821 for an early method of dry cleaning. The answer Whoa. choices are. Wow. This is a <laughs> <laughs> Please go the options. These, these are all over the place. <laughs> but okay. Fred, Fred has used the crowd to, to do process of elimination. So we're going to give you the same flexibility. But the question again, who was the first African-American person to receive a patent in the United States in 1821 for an early method of dry cleaning? And the options are A, Thomas L. Jennings, B, Benjamin Banneker, C, Madam C.J. Walker, D, Andrew Jackson Beard. Um, A? You're correct. A, Thomas L. Jennings. Great stab uh, in the dark. You <laughs> oh, well, because uh, Nadine gave her the answer, right? <laughs> did, you, did you cheat Thank my you, Nadine? Nadine. <laughs> Nadine. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, Jesse, I thought the answer, uh, the questions are going to be a little easier. I, this is my first time seeing them. We're opening up the package now. <laughs> so, so we'll see. I'm, I'm going to give Nadine a point on that, too. So yeah, she, Nadine so gets she, a point. She did very good on that one. So we're gonna put I saw that uh, Michael and um Michael and Stephanie talked about option B. So I think they got the Tuskegee Institute when it was created when it was formed. Was that so B? Michael was picked, it, it looks B? like he picked option B. That was wrong. Then I was oh that was C wrong. Oh okay. Okay. So at the end of round one, we have Ketchy and Nadine with one. Fred with zero, but Fred has an opportunity to come back <laughs> with this question. Another timeline question, so it's probably going to be a little difficult here. 
When was the initial civil rights legislation passed? A, 1964, B, 1957, C, 1961, or D, 1962? The question again, when was the initial civil rights legislation passed? The initial civil rights legislation. <laughs> okay, I said 1961. 1961 would be incorrect. The correct answer is B, 1957. I should always go with my first. <laughs> my first. I always get a, the answer right in my head, and then I I, I pick a wrong one. <laughs> that happened the first one too. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's okay. You're not that far behind. Oh, and we got Stephanie, Stephanie saying her parents before, before drilled. Before his, before his, okay. Before. Yeah, I Stephanie, you can answer these questions too. We are all we, about right. learning black like history. We got points all around. Four years before you were born. Wow. All right. Here we go. Oh, this is a more expansive view of black history. And this one is for Madam Ketchy. Who is credited with creating language? A, the Phoenicians. B, the Egyptians. C, Zulu Nation. Why are you giving out the easy questions? <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Hold on, Jesse. You are breaking up. Please, can you give me the options again? Yes. Uh, the question is, who is credited with creating language? The options are A, Phoenicians. Okay. B, Egyptians. C, Zulu Nation. D, Ethiopians. I want to say the Phoenicians. You are correct. Yet again. I, only because when you um when this when you are trying to pronounce words and they say pronounce it phonetically, Phoenicians, phonetic, no. Yeah. Ah, look at that deductive reasoning. <laughs> have a smart cookie here. All right. But I mean, whoever also got that, I'll say I actually disagree because some some believe it was also Egypt. Old Ooh. the Kemet, the Kemet uh, of old, land of the black people, the um, cradle of civilization. All right, but uh, we'll let that go. <laughs> okay, so we're putting the asterisk by that point. We're putting the asterisk <laughs> by it, and we have to do further research. <laughs> All right, but it is a point nonetheless. All right, yeah. so the score, the end of round two, catchy two, Fred zero. Are we ready for round three? Let's do it. Yes. Round three. Let's go. All right. Who worked on the patent for the telephone and improved the method for the production of carbon filaments for which he gained his own patent used to create the commercial light bulb? A, Louis Latimer. B, Thomas L. Jennings. C. Alfred L. Crail. D. Leonard C. Bailey. Uh, good. A. You would be correct. Fred is on the board. A. <laughs> All right. Adam Ketchy. The Nguni people migrated down from east coast or the east coast of Africa, reaching South Africa. Around the 9th century CE, what clan did they form? A, the Maasai, B, the Zulu, C, the Yoruba, D, the San Bushmen. Oh. Uh, it's a toss up between B and D. Okay. And what is your final answer? <sighs> Um, I want to say B. You would be correct. Yeah! B, the Zulu. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Amazing. Amazing. So, so much pressure. So much pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now the score here is three to one. All right. Round four. 
I, I see Michael said A. I'm not sure which one he was going. No, for. that was uh, Latimer. The oh yes, Lat Michael. Oh, okay. Michael was correct. I want to put Michael's score on here too because I know he chimes in. So Michael, you get a point for Lewis Latimer. All right. Next question. What pioneering female civil rights attorney wrote the book State's Laws on Race and Color in 1951? Your options are A, Constance Motley, B, Jane Brolin, C, Polly Murray, D, Vano Spencer. I question no again. Who, I have no oh. idea who any of these people are. Ah, <laughs> this one I, I already knew, so it would be wrong for me to give one. Francis, I don't even know. <laughs> Did <you> anybody? <laughs> yes. I, well, I will give this hint. They are from Durham, and they actually have a center. That's why I know, because I drive by their center. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so you said the options again are? The options are Constant Smotley. B, Jane Brolin, C, Polly Murray, D, Vano Spencer. Jane Brolin. Jane Brolin, that is incorrect. You want, you want to try, Ketchy? Huh? No, this is not my no, question. No, she said not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the answer is Polly Murray. Polly Murray, Polly Murray. Oh, civil okay. rights attorney. She has a center. Ste in Stephanie says she's letting her parents down. Wait, <laughs> so no, I don't feel too bad. No one is letting anyone down. This is no, all Stephanie. Trust me, you're not. We thought it was going to be easy. <laughs> we're all we're all learning. We're all learning together. And on top of that, everybody said that they're playing for themselves so that they don't have the pressure of their family, <laughs> city, exactly. and their country, and all that. All. So we're good. Stephanie, you're good. All right, Kedgy, here we go. Oh, a timeline question. Woo, you may know this one. In what year did Moorish General Tariq Ibn Ziyad lead African mm. and Arab forces in their conquest of Iberia, which is now known as Spain and Portugal? Oh, Lord. A, 1492 <laughs> CE, B, 711 CE, C, 58 CE, D, 32 BCE. Um, can you please give me the dates? Yes, the dates are A, 1492 CE, B, 711 CE, C, 58 CE, D, 32 BCE. B? Yeah, that was before Common Era. Um. No, I. Uh, B, I, I, I guess. think she said. I think she said B. Yeah. You said B. Yeah. You would be correct. Seven Eleven Common Era. See, see, she's trying to act like she doesn't know this stuff, but she knows it. She, <laughs> she knows. It. I'm honestly just guessing. Some of these, I'm honestly just guessing. <laughs> Nadine, Nadine just said B, and then. Uh, see, she, all right, no, on the same page. We're Steph guessing the same Stephanie, page. Yes. Stephanie also said 7 Eleven. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. I mean, Stephanie. if you go by my by my strategy, the the last question was totally off. It couldn't possibly be. It couldn't be possibly A, A2 because 1492 was too soon. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the other That's one was, was before Common Era BCE. So the we did so between 7 Eleven and 58. But then if you think about it, 58 would be too far out. Right. So then of course you come to 7 Eleven. <laughs> That's great. We love deductive reasoning here. Yeah. That's great. All right, Mr. Nantra. Yes. You're now behind to one. Let's go. Uh oh. Who is the known leader of the Haitian Revolution, which started in 1791 and Ooh. lasted until 1804? Uh, Your answer uh... choices are. Okay, good. Hey. <laughs> <That was> good. <laughs> I feel like I know this one, but I mean, let me hear the I options. A, Jean-Jacques Dessalines. B, Toussaint L'Ouverture. Toussaint L'Ouverture, you don't have to go any further. There you go. There you go. <laughs> the great. All right, so you get that point, and we mark you down. All right, catchy. 
What civilization is used as proof that Africans were in the Americas long before the arrival of Christopher Columbus? Uh, A, the Olmecs. B, the Mayans. C, the A. Incas. What was that? A. A is correct. A is correct. The Olmecs. Notable for having statues with Olmec heads that had cornrows and people couldn't figure yep. out. People, yeah. white explorers, couldn't figure out where that came from. But they resemble the big heads on the Solomon Islands as well. Exactly. Exactly. And those big heads don't look like white people, so that's <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Nantra. Stephanie said on full lips, and she's absolutely right. Yes. On full lips. The beauty for which we have. Somebody said soup coolers? What? No. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, that's Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, what's that? No, here, like, people pick on you if you have big lips, and they say, oh, you got those big soup coolers. They say you oh, blow. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's, it's colorism, but we, you know, jab each other just to be funny. All right. Here we go. Mr. Nantra. So you um, said someone's tr trying to get extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, which electronic engineer invented the video game cartridge revolutionizing home video game systems? A, Lonnie Johnson. B, James E. West. C, Jerry Lawson. D, Al Zoller. Oh, my goodness. How do I keep getting all these questions? <laughs> okay, I'll go with A. A, Lonnie Johnson? That would be incorrect. The correct oh. answer is C, Jerry Lawson. I think he invented the Atari. Atari. Oh, really? Atari? Yeah. Interesting. Jerry Lawson. Atari. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Miss Ketchy. Who was the first prime minister of the Congo? A, Patrice Lumumba. Are you serious? B, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> B, Steve Biko. C, Augustine Matata Ponyo. Oh, wow. B, Thomas Sankara. Can you please give me the options again? Yes. Um, A, Patrice Lumumba. B, Steve Biko. C, Augustine Matata Ponyo. D, Thomas Sankara. And the uh, question is, who was the first prime minister of the Congo? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Lumumba? Lumumba, that is correct. Patrice Lumumba, yeah. Patrice that is Lumumba. correct. Okay. Oh, I catch you. You didn't know this off offhand. <laughs> I, go, I go mad. No. Okay. So I was doing process of elimination. I know it's not Biko, and I know it's not Sankara. I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah, the other Sankara. two. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not Mata. I mean, it's Lumumba because okay, me. I grew up on the streets adjacent to Patrice Lumumba, so that one wasn't. <laughs> That was the yeah. hometown question for free. Yeah. That's <laughs> and I studied, I studied, um, I read, I read uh, Nkrumah's book on the challenge of the Congo. So, I mean, Lumumba has always been one of I my mean that you know, African, yeah. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Well, mm -hmm. let's see if you get one that works for you. Here we go. Which African group proudly calls themselves um, Amiz, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Amazi, meaning Free men or noble people? A. How do you pronounce? How's, how's the? How's it spelled? It's uh, A M A Z I G H. Okay. Okay. And the options are A. The Berbers. B. The Zulu. C. The Dogon. D. The Wudabi. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. Amazi, the free people. It couldn't be the Berbers because the Berbers are in North Algeria, North Africa. And then, and then what was the second option again? B, the Zulu. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then? Uh, C, the Dogon. I and D, the Wudabi. Maybe. Okay, let's go. Okay. 
Let's go with the dog. The dog on you going with C? Yeah. Well, the one you eliminated is actually the answer, at least according to this card. The Berbers. Wait, what? The Berbers? The Berbers. Really? That's that's in what the Algeria? <laughs> it just says which oh, African wow. group proudly calls themselves amazing, meaning free men or noble people. Oh, interesting. The Berbers. The Berbers they got it because they said it was but 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 they they spoke that way and they were not oh interesting. I even met one guy who was speaking Berber and he he said uh I, I said I, I mean initially I thought it was uh, he was speaking something else. If I could guess where he was from, mm-hmm. I'll be I'll be a magician. I said oh, okay. Then he told me yeah, he was from he was he was speaking Berber. Interesting. All right. Yeah, let's yeah. learn. <laughs> All right. Let's see. All right. Nadine, this is not your question. <laughs> it's too easy for her. All right. Here we go. Nadine, please don't give it. Don't give it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, who is the central symbolic figure in Rastafarian ideology? A, Kwame Nkrumah. B, Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. C, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. D, Mansa Musa of Mali. B. Yes, B. Freddie said, this seems very one out of these questions. I know, Freddie said, this question seems so easy. <laughs> yeah, she gave the easy questions too. <laughs> the questions that I know offhand. I'm trying to mix one, up though. the stack some here so we can figure out where the questions are coming from. All right, here we go. So at the end of this round, it is now six to two, catchy. All right, here we go. Fred, your question is, what is the importance of June 19th? A, the beginning of ancient Egyptian summer. B, Juneteenth. C, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. D, Jamaica's Independence Day. Juneteenth. You are correct. We finally got you one of these answers that were pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you your point here. All right. Miss Ketchy. This is going to be, a friend's going to be mad about this one. Um, who freed Ghana from British rule, making the country an independent nation on March 6, 1957? A, Kwame Nkrumah. B, Prince Kofi Amoing Bin. C, Patrice Lumumba. D, Kofi Abreva Busia. A? Yes. <laughs> I was really like it was a trick question. So I was like, maybe it's not what I know. Maybe it's somebody else. No, when I was reading it, I was like, oh, I know Fred wishes this was his question. This is <laughs> all right. So you get a point for that one. And we're back to Fred. Who was one of the planners of what is now Washington, D.C.? A, Booker T. Washington. B, Frederick Douglass. C, Hiram Rhodes Revels. D, Benjamin Banneker. Hmm. I feel like I know this one. The planners of Washington, D.C. Yes. Booker T. Is it Booker T.? All right. You want those answer choices again? Yeah, please. Okay. A is Booker T. Washington. Yeah. B is Frederick Douglass. C is Hiram Rhodes Revels. D is Benjamin Banneker. Okay, I'll say Booker T. That is that incorrect. That is incorrect. The correct answer is Benjamin Banneker. Don't tell me. Don't tell me it's uh, Banneker. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I, did, I should have just gone with my initial answer. All right. That's fine. That's fine. 
I think there were a couple people in the comments that were giving you Booker T. Washington too. Oh, oh right. My good to others. Not, yeah, they were leading you down the wrong path. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, Tony, Tony, Mark, no, no more answers. I, I was going to say <laughs> Banneker, and then I listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> they said, don't take oh. my black card. Yeah, it's in jeopardy, though. <laughs> <It's> in... <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Miss Catchy. The week-long celebration, Negro History Week, which was expanded in 1976 and is now known as Black History Month, was started in 1926 by A, Ralph Bunch, B, Nat Turner, C, Carter G. Woodson, D, John M. Langston. D? That is incorrect. The correct answer is C, Carter G. Woodson, yeah, also Carter the G. author of The Miseducation of the Negro. of a Negro. Great book. If you haven't read it, definitely check it out. I feel like I've read the book. Probably so. Yeah, I think I have, yeah. Probably so. All right. It's like Steph came through the sea as the uh, I need to start cheating and reading the comments to get answers. (laughs) (laughs) Make sure they're the right answers. (laughs) All right. Please uh, please don't read it because they'll lead you down the wrong path. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Fred, it's so salty. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, Fred still has Mine's an opportunity. Sketchy, so I'm not going to be uh, too competitive. <laughs> Fred has an opportunity to try to mount a comeback here, and the question is as follows: The district of Hayti was formed in which North Carolina city? A. Wilmington. B. Fayetteville. C. Durham. D. Rocky Mount. The city of what? Hayti. The district of Hayti was formed in which North Carolina city? A. Wilmington, B. Okay. Fayetteville, C. Durham, D. Rocky Mount. I feel like if it was formed in Durham, I'd have heard it by now because of between Jesse and my uncle who live in Durham. So it's definitely not Durham. <laughs> Oh, are you guys frozen? No, Hello, can no. You hear me? we're waiting answers. Oh, okay. All right. And then the um, fate. So the answers are Fateville, Wilmington, and Rocky Mountain. I'll say Fateville. Fred, I can't believe you got this wrong. It's Durham, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Durham. It's How come you never told me about that? <laughs> So, so just for people who don't know, I'm from Durham. Hayti was a huge block of where African Americans used to own all the businesses and all the houses, even before um, civil rights. And W. E. B. Du Bois came down. He wrote a whole book about how Durham is the beacon of Black America and what oh, wow. it looked like because white and black were able to work together, even though they're segregated. Uh, but Hayti was what they actually built our highway system through to destroy that Black community in the 70s. So we have a memorial left, Hayti Heritage Center, where we still do civic events and stuff like that. But it's uh, literally like two blocks from Central. <laughs> so we we pass oh, really? the class. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, man. We got to get you out here on a visit, man. I drove, I drove past there, if, if, if that's the case. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I drove past that way. All right. Miss Ketchy, let's see what you got. Are you wait? Did you just shuffle the cards? No, no, yeah. I'm going back and forth oh, between okay. the two different decks. Okay, okay. So, your question is Who was the first black American to serve as a member of the board of directors of a Fortune 500 company? A. Kenneth Chenault, B. Ursula Barnes, C. Vernon Jordan. Stephanie, D. I hope you're hearing the question so you can help me. <laughs> <laughs> And D. Arnold Donald. Um, I don't even know. Please give me the options again. I'm about to do any mini mining with my head. Yes, yes. So the question is, who was the first Black American to serve as a member of the board of directors of a Fortune 500 corporation? And the choices are 
A, Kenneth Chenault, B, Ursula Burns, C, Vernon Jordan, D, Arnold Darling. A? No, correct answer is C, Vernon Jordan. Vernon Jordan. <laughs> Vernon Jordan. That's, also um, known as Bill Clinton's best friend. Bill Clinton's <laughs> best friend, yeah. Oh, wow. He even testified yes. in the trial. Dang, yes. Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hold on, guys. I need to go get headphones. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, sure. Stephanie came through with the Vernon Jordan answer. All right. All right. Are you ready for yours or you want to wait for a kitchen? Yeah, you can read it out. Okay. Your question is, the enslaved blacks in the United States were freed January 1st, 1863. Mm -hmm. But what day were the last of these enslaved people in Texas notified they were free? A, June 19th, 1863. B, August 19th, 1863. June 19th. C, June 19th, 1865. D, June 19th, 1864. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was uh, Juneteenth, it was 1865. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yes, you are back on the board with more points. Congratulations, good sir. All right. Oh, Kitchy miss, missed that. <laughs> Catch you in your absence. Fred got another one right. It was another Juneteenth related question that he got wait, right. Wait, so how? Uh, wait, who's in the lead? Uh, still the, in the, lead the score, of <laughs> the score okay. right now is eight to four, but Fred oh, is okay. mounting a comeback. Is it me, eight? Yes, you have. Okay, eight. okay, all right. All right, your next question. Which national team with 12 of its 23 players boasting African ancestry? won the 2018 FIFA World Cup in soccer? Is it A, Turkey, B, England, C, Germany, D, France? France. That is correct. <laughs> this is such a uh, gimme. <laughs> because she's keep guessing gimme's. <laughs> All right, so at the end of that round, we are at nine to four. We'll catch you in the lead. All right, Fred, here you go. Which activist, scholar, and ex Black Panther Party member co founded Critical Resistance, an organization working to abolish the prison industrial complex? A, Angela Davis, B, Mary Frances Berry, C, Asada Shakur, D, Huey P. Newton. Angela Davis. That is correct. Angela Davis. <laughs> All yeah. right. The others, it couldn't possibly be Asata Shaka. She's she's exiled. It couldn't exactly. possibly be he he P. Newton. He's been killed. And then who was the third one? Who was the other one? The third one was Mary Frances Berry. Mary Frances Berry. I never heard of her, so it's not possible. She's she's one of them. So <laughs> okay. Good deductive <laughs> reasoning there. Mm -hmm. Michael said D. D is Huey Newton. No, no, no. Not he's the founder of the. He was the founder, the yeah. co-founder. Him and Bobby Seale founded Black Panther Party. And if, and oh, if you scour... I, should have, I should have been quiet. <laughs> I should have been quiet if I give out. <laughs> and, and if you're looking for something interesting on the interwebs, a few I actually did an, an interview with Angela Davis's attorney. Oh. Um, really? Yeah, um, for, for my job, but <laughs> I did an interview for Angela Davis's attorney, and he's very full of stuff. He actually was represented Bobby Seale at the initial part of the Chicago 8 trial, too, so we got some good insight. I don't know what the link is. Just type it in. <laughs> It'll be on there somewhere. All right. Yeah. Um, Miss Ketchy, which African-American U.S. congresswoman habitually carried a copy of the United States Constitution in her handbag. A, Barbara Jordan, B, Donna Edwards, C, Shirley Chisholm, D, Maxine Waters. Can you please repeat it? 
Yes. Which African-American U.S. Congresswoman okay. habitually carried a copy of the United States Constitution in her handbag? A, Barbara Jordan, B, Donna Edwards, C, Shirley Chisholm, D, Maxine Waters. A? A is correct. Barbara Jordan. <laughs> okay, I caught you. You are, you are peeping. <laughs> Can't you peep down? <laughs> she looked at the comments. I caught you. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, you don't give me the answer. So you give me the answer. Leave me alone. You're not roasting this game. <sighs> Stephanie, you're in trouble. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right. Just when I'm mounting the comeback, then Stephanie yeah. gives, it, gives me up. Is this a, a black girl thing or something? <laughs> black girl magic. There you go. Black girl magic. <laughs> um. All right. So the score is now ten to five. Right. Fred, you're running short on time. So we're going to try to see where you go on this next question. The first Black-owned television station in the United States began broadcasting in 1975 <clears throat> and was located in A, Los Angeles, B, Cincinnati, C, New York, D, Detroit. Hmm. Okay, so... The first, the first black-owned television station mm -hmm. in the United States began broadcasting in 1975 and was located in A. Los Angeles, B. Cincinnati, C. New York, D. Detroit. Okay, let's go with Detroit. You're right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> It's the only city that they're going to allow black people to have anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wool Town. All right. There you go. So. Stephanie, no no clues. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's catchy. Kwanzaa, okay. the celebration honoring African heritage and African American culture. Observed from December 26th to January 1st, culminating in a feast and gift giving, started in what year? A, 1888, B, 1901, C, 1966, okay. D, 1987. Um. I don't know one point. 1960 something. Okay, well, I'll read them again. So it's A, 1888, B, 1901, C, 1966, and D, C. 1987. I'm just guessing C. You would be correct. Your oh. guesses have not led you wrong yet. Yes. That is another I'm afraid I wasn't looking at the comments. <laughs> oh, no, no. Has no someone given me any answers there? <laughs> no one has given any answers. <laughs> no, nobody has given me an answer. All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 66 was, um, what do you call it? It was, of course, uh, I don't know. I, somehow I thought it was 67. But uh, yeah, so. I actually thought it was uh, 70 great. something, but I was wrong. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I just thought it was any time that we didn't have money for Christmas. Wasn't that Karanga? <laughs> wow. Wasn't that the Karanga who. <laughs> What's that? Karanga? You said Karanga? Oh, I think you froze. I said, wasn't that Dr. Karanga who came up with that? Yes. Absolutely. All Can you right. hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Oh, okay. I was, I was saying, was that Dr. Karanga? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Fred, is your question. Name the first African American woman to head a publicly traded company and own a number one ranked radio station in any major market. A. Melody Hobson. B. Oprah Winfrey. C. Gwendolyn Sykes. D. Kathy Hughes. Oh, you are you are, you are breaking up. I couldn't hear you. And there's some okay. issue with my maybe no I'll change that to. Okay, say it. Read it again. So the question is, 
named the first African-American woman to head a publicly traded company and own a number one ranked radio station in any mm-hmm. major market. The options are A, Melody Hobson, B, Oprah Winfrey, C, Gwendolyn Sykes, D, Kathy Hughes. And it says it's a radio station and ranked number what? Number one in number what? Number one. Any major market. I want to say Oprah, but hers was television. I don't think, I don't remember her being in radio. And uh, the only other person I was thinking of was huge. And she was the first one. Was it, she was the first billionaire or something? Did she say billionaire? Um, no, first African American woman to head a public Fortune 500. publicly traded company and own a number one ranked traded radio company. Mm-hmm. So what's your okay? I'll go with Stephanie answer? on this one. <laughs> D. <laughs> Stephanie saying D. D is D. correct. <laughs> Kathy Hughes, daughter of Petey Green okay. and um, the CEO of Radio. Was it? Radio One, she still does the commercials. And Radio One, to do stuff. Yep, I have some stocks in the Radio One. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Stock price <laughs> just went up because you mentioned it. There you go. Yeah, All yeah, right. it is. Um, so, what do you call it? So, um, I was saying, um, yeah, Oprah. I don't think was Oprah on radio. That's how come I. That would have been the obvious answer, but no, I, I think she started off as media. as a news reporter, and then she worked through news uh, or through TV news until she got yeah. her own show, and her own network. All right, Miss Catchy. Legislation to restrict the movement and freedom of freedmen was enacted in 1865 in Mississippi, and was known as a Black Rules. B, Negro Restrictions, C, Black Papers, D, Black Codes. Um, Can you please repeat the question? Yes. Legislation to restrict the movement and freedom of freedmen was enacted in 1865 in Mississippi and was known as A, Black Rules, B, Negro Restrictions, C, Black Papers, D, Black codes. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Um, D? D is correct. (laughs) (laughs) You always guess the right one. (laughs) D is correct. Wow. I guess you could be wrong. <laughs> oh my goodness, I give up. <laughs> Everyone else should guess it. guess the right ones. <laughs> so the, the score we have right now, it's 12 to, looks like seven, 12 to seven. All right. Oh, wow. But Freddie's catching up. <laughs> He's catching up. He's getting there. We got a little more time. Here we go. Fred, your question. The first black woman elected to Congress was... A, Patrice Harris, B, Barbara Jordan, C, Shirley Chisholm, D, Sadie Alexander. I did that, and uh, Amy Glocky is going to be mad at me if I get this wrong. (laughs) Uh Oh, I'm looking for the comments. I'm trying to see what people (laughs) are. What are the answers again? Uh, First black woman elected to Congress was A, Patricia Harris, B, Barbara Jordan, C, Shirley Chisholm, D, Sadie Oh, Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm is correct. That is correct. Because Barbara Jordan is too young. I don't think she was even born when... (laughs) All right. All right. All right. Let's see. Oh, this is a game piece card. So this one's just going to get removed. Put that over there. Another game piece card for those of you interested. Put that over there. All right. Here we go. Catch your question. The first woman bank president of any race to charter a bank in the United States was 
A, Angela J. Field. B, Annie Minerva Turnbow Malone. C, Mary Eliza Mahoney. Mm. D, Maggie L. Walker. Uh, can you please give me the options again? Yes. So the question is, the first woman bank president of any race to charter a bank in the United States was A, Angela J. Field. B, Annie Minerva Turnbow Malone. C, Mary Eliza Mahoney. D, Maggie L. Walker. C? C is incorrect. The correct answer is D, Maggie L. Walker. All right. Oh, Maggie L. Walker. You have an opportunity Let me here. put that down. Yes, Maggie L. Walker. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fred, name the 14-year-old young man who was wrongfully convicted and executed in 1944, Columbia, South Carolina. A, mm -hmm. Emmett Till. B, George Stinney. C, Medgar Evers. D, Robert Wright. Emmett Till. Incorrect. They, they made you fall into the gap. Nope. So it's it's actually George Stinney. Um, this is the 14-year-old in Columbia, South Carolina. Emmett Till was in, uh, I think it was Mississippi. Mississippi. Wow. Oh. And Emmett Till was not convicted. He was just taken out in the middle of the night by Klansmen or crazy white people. George Stinney was the youngest person to go through the justice system. He was 14 years old when they did, I think it was election. Just yeah. Because yeah. yeah, that's how they do us over here. They don't care. Um, so that one did not get answered correctly. We'll put that into the box. So at this point, Ketchy has Justine. 12. Fred is at eight. We're back with Ketchy. Name the African-American male that holds the title of the longest career by a dish jockey on air personality in the Guinness Book of World Records. A, Don Cornelius, B, Herb Kent, the cool gent, C, Donnie Simmons, D, Tom Joyner. No clue. <laughs> We're not big radio people, huh? So <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't drive, so I don't listen to the radio. Um, Tom Joyner? That is incorrect. The correct answer is B. Herb Kemp, the cool gent. Oh wow! Herb Kemp. What, what was the question again? Which, which radio station does he disc jockey for? That I disc jockey. Oh, that doesn't tell me all that. Um, the the question was the African American male that holds the title of the longest career by a disc jockey on air personality in the Guinness Book of World Records. And it's Herb okay. Kemp, the cool gent. Cool gent. Okay. Okay. All right. Next question for Fred. Which of these African leaders is said to have sent two expeditions to find the edge of the Atlantic Ocean? A. Sunny Ali Bear of Songhai. Uh, B. Mansa Abu Bakari II of Mali. C. Shaka Zulu of the Zulu Kingdom. D, Queen Nzinga of the Congo. Um, that should be Abu Bakar. Yep, that's it. B, you're right. You get a point on that. How does that come back? How close am I? <laughs> okay, so the score right now, before we ask uh, catch you the next question, she's got 12, you've got 9. So depending on how she performs on this next few questions, determines the outcome. No pressure. No pressure. So she could just answer a few correct and uh, I will not be able to catch it. <laughs> well, catch you. Here's the first question. So what was the name of the black feminist organization that came out of Boston in the 1970s and 1980s? Yeah. A, the National Organization of Black Feminists. B, the Kambahi River Collective. 
C, now. D, Planned Parenthood. No, it's not Planned Parenthood. Can you give me the options again? Yes. Uh, what was the name of the black feminist organization that came out of Boston in the 1970s and 1980s? A, the National Organization of Black Feminists. B, Kambahi River Collective. C, now. D, Planned Parenthood. What's the say the first one again for me, please? The first one is the National Organization of Black Feminists. Is it that? I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, that would be incorrect. It is actually the Kumbahi River Collective. Oh wow. Yes. So I'm afraid you still have a shot here. The time is running out. Fred, your question. Are you there? Are you frozen? You hear me? Fred? Yes, sir. Is he frozen? No. Uh -oh. yeah, um, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can, okay. You, can you hear me? Here's, here's your question. We hear you now. Here's your question. Hold Who is the second. author of the... Is that, hold on. Oh, did we lose him? Fred. Yeah, it looks like he's frozen. Uh oh. Let me send him a message here. Okay. Fred, are you back? Oh. Okay. All right. So our time is going to run low for it. Hello? All right. I think we might have lost my set. So I sent him some messages, but I haven't. Okay. Seen okay. Back. All right. Well, we've got three minutes. He was on the verge of a comeback. It seems, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know. Technical difficulties have derailed him, and now he's gone. Oh, or he's yeah. Or he's, you there you go. Yes. Okay. You, you're on the verge of a comeback, but you only have three minutes to come back. So, <laughs> try, <laughs> try to figure this out. Uh, your question is: Who is the author of the acclaimed book "The Wretched of the Earth"? A. Ivan Van Sertima. B. W. E. B. Dubois, C. Manning Mirabel, D. France Fanon. France Fanon. It is D. You're right. You're right. It's close again. I think right. I wrote. I wrote that. Oh, good you know, Yeah, France Fanon. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Catchy is getting close. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> who wrote the book? The Black Jacobins, Toussaint L'Overture, and the San Domingo Revolution. A. C. L. R. James. B. James Baldwin. C. Jean Price Mars. D. Marie Celie Ignat. Can you please repeat the question? Yes. Who wrote the book The Black Jacobins, Toussaint L'Overture, and the San Domingo Revolution? A. C. L. R. James. B. James Baldwin, C. Jean Price Mars, D. Marie Celie Ignat. Um, uh, C. L. R. James. Correct. Correct. You got that, bro. At this point, I'm just guessing. <laughs> You are like a hundred percent with guesses. Like every guess is right. <laughs> All right. So Fred, it's it's one twenty nine. I'm gonna ask you this last one, but I think that that might have solidified it right there. I think she might have gotten you on this. But here we go. Hold on. After Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me move. Let me move. Let me see.
All right, can you hear us? That's uh, a switch rooms. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is the last question. After Medgar Evers' death, how long did it take to bring his assassin to justice? Oh, I have Eight, one more problem. Years. I have. Uh... Uh, yours? All right. Well, I mean, I I think it's one thirty. So it sounds like. Unfortunately, technical difficulties may impact Fred's ability to mount a comeback here. And I think you solidified it with that last question that you got right. Even though it was allegedly a stab in the dark, which now I no longer believe these are guesses. I think I think that you've been reading this stuff on Google and you've been studying Actually, this. I haven't. I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been honestly studying. been guessing. <laughs> you probably have a PhD in this stuff and just haven't told us. Right? <laughs> so, I wish. <laughs> Meet the inventor of this card game. Her name is Catchy, and she's a <laughs> yes. Hey, Fred. Hey. So it's it's one thirty. Um, and we have have yeah. Gone can you hear me? This. Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. So we have gone through, and oh, okay. for today, it it seems as if Catchy is our winner. Uh, with a score of 13 to 10. So this is a valiant effort. Oh, Let's give a good. round of applause to all we of our good. participants. Yay! Now, the issue is the show now owes Catchy two gifts because she won the last game as well. So um, we're, we're going to try to figure out uh, what two gifts those things are going to be, and I will be in contact with you to try to figure out how to get those to you this week, um, do you do you have a preference for what you like? Do you have a preference as far as uh, clothes, coffee, um, just general money? Like, is there, is there a preference? Of uh, probably a, a gift card. Gift card. Okay. All right. We'll make that work. All right. And thank you for everyone who uh, commented, right. who thank played you along with us. Especially this was great. Nadine and Stephanie, you guys really yes. helped me. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, so, Gigi. This is hopefully the first of many, because as you all can absolutely. see. Absolutely. This is this was fun. I like this. I like this got a lot. a ton more cards to go. Uh, <laughs> so, so hopefully this is the first. I've got a lot of different game ideas going on as well. But for those of you who may not have seen our show before, uh, make sure that you follow us on Instagram at the Pan Africana Show. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, you can like our page. It's uh, Afrisco Presents uh, Pan Africana on Facebook. Uh, and definitely, we're going to try to continue bringing together and bridging the gap between our culture around the world. Uh, and hopefully, you know, if you have people who are interested in being a guest or anything like that, Absolutely. reach out to us. We don't bite. Um, we don't charge fees or anything like that. We're, we, we don't scare people away. We want to build uh, a community here that everybody can be proud of mm -hmm. and everybody can claim some degree of ownership for. So uh, thank you all for playing with us. Thanks, guys. Um, hopefully Fred will be able to get back on to say his goodbyes. But if not, thank you. Congratulations. Catch you. We'll be in touch. Thanks, and guys. Thank you all for tuning in another week. Bye, y'all. See y'all next week, right? Bye. Yep, next week. Bye. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, so uh, if you haven't done so already, please do so. Uh, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and uh, follow us on Instagram. And, uh, as you can see here, the lovely Kitchy uh, so smart is that even when she guesses, she gets the right answer. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Yes, but you're breaking up. I'm breaking up. I have a very bad perception. I don't know what's going on. But, um, hey, everyone, have a good weekend. See you again next week with another great show. Yeah. All right.
Well, yeah, we've already given all of our social media stuff and everything so people can reach out to us. Uh, but yeah, everybody have a wonderful week and we will see you next you Saturday. All right. Bye.